What can a 4 core 4 threaded CPU do in 2024? As the time goes on, the prices of the modern lower end hardware drop lower and lower, but that doesn't necessarily mean that everybody can obtain that hardware. I still keep seeing people that are gaming on CPUs that have no more than 4 cores and 4 threads. I met a guy recently that was building a PC on an i3-9100F, which is also a 4 core 4 threaded CPU. I also visited a few people who were gaming on a 3rd and 4th gen i5s. Speaking of which, that's where we got this i5-4570, cause it got me thinking, what is it actually like to game on such a CPU nowadays? So why don't we head to the benchmarks and see what this CPU is capable of? To test the performance of this CPU, I'll be using an RTX 2060 to make sure that we don't get bottlenecked by the graphics card and see the full potential of our CPU. I'll be skipping the games with low requirements because this i5 isn't that weak and believe it or not, it will run a lot of the games without any problems. Besides, we're trying to figure out whether or not it can run modern games that are popular nowadays. Let's begin our benchmarks with CS2. We are running this game on the lowest possible settings. I could have set the graphics a bit higher, but we're trying to stress the CPU here, and increasing the graphics of the game simply increases the stress on the GPU, so I'll be keeping the graphics low throughout our tests. Speaking of which, the game performed quite well on this i5-4570. Even though the game is quite demanding on the CPU, I didn't see any stutters and the loading times were good too. We averaged around 100 FPS. AVX2 instruction set really does miracles for this CPU because not having this feature in 2024 makes it kinda impossible for many CPUs to run modern games without any issues. This feature was introduced when Haswell CPUs came out. It wasn't as big of a deal back then as it is right now because the games were way less demanding 10 years ago and having this CPU back then was kind of an overkill. But don't get me wrong, AVX2 was a big leap from AVX1 but it didn't make these CPUs with AVX1 obsolete, whereas today, the CPUs that do not have AVX2 are pretty much obsolete, they just struggle way too much with the modern games. But even the older ones like GTA 5 were quite stuttery on a 3rd gen i5 because the CPU didn't have AVX2. Our i5-4570 on the other hand handled the game quite well. Loading times were fine and I didn't get any stutters whatsoever throughout the gameplay. And bear in mind that I had the crowd density and every other option maxed out because I was honestly trying to find a flaw, but to my surprise the game just wouldn't stutter no matter what I did. Same goes for Doom Eternal. Amongst all of the games I have ever tested, Doom Eternal has always performed well no matter what I threw at it. It's just a really well utilized game and we can clearly see it on our screen how much FPS we're getting and how stable it is. I just wish we had more games like this because if you have a really powerful GPU, the game just isn't gonna stutter even if you're running it on a such a weak CPU. And then we have games like Starfield where even the modern hardware struggles to achieve 60fps cause of the game's bad utilization. Which is something I cannot say about Forza Horizon 5 because it performed amazing on this old CPU. Now I know that we don't simply just close down every single application whenever we open a game just to get most out of our CPU, but I just wanna showcase that if you let a 4 core 4 threaded CPU do its thing and not give it too many tasks, it'll perform quite well. But whenever I had many browser tabs opened while trying to multitask and play the game at the same time, I started noticing frequent stuff and it didn't come as a surprise to me by any means because that's what the CPU threads are for and since we only have 4 of them, the CPU will struggle to handle all of these tasks at once. The Witcher 3 also performed quite well. The FPS was pretty much always stable. The few times I saw a stutter was when I was entering a big city or some kind of a zone or if many enemies were spawning at the same time. Again, that's caused by the lack of the CPU threads. 4 threads are just not enough in this day and age. And last but not least, Cyberpunk. Of course we're gonna test our CPU in this highly demanding game. The first thing I noticed when I loaded in was that the stutters became way too frequent. 
but after some time once everything loaded, the stutters almost completely went away, although I was still experiencing those stutters whenever I was moving really fast or whenever stuff was spawning in front of me. This was more noticeable in fights and shootouts where you have a bunch of bullets and textures being loaded every second, and this was happening when the game was the only active application. I can imagine how much more stutter you would get if you try to open your browser or discord and stuff while trying to play the game at the same time. But if you already own such a CPU, then you most likely are aware of its downsides. The less tasks you give it, the better it will perform. Overall, I'm quite impressed by how well this i5-4570 performed today. Honestly, I don't know what I was expecting. I guess I thought that it would stutter way harder and it would be unbearable, but I guess I have to give it to the CPU. It performed way better than it should have. On that note, let's wrap up this video. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, I will see you guys in the next one. Bye bye.